Welcome, friends. Welcome. Thank you for being here. In today's video, as we confront the horrific events of October the 7th, I uh, have a series of tabs and information that I want to share with you today. October the 7th, last year, when Hamas launched the horrific, devastating jihadist attacks on Israel, leaving countless lives destroyed, shattered. So together, we're going to navigate through this pain and chaos. But also, I want us to go through and reflect on the Bible, because there, there is a biblical significance of these events in relation to end times prophecy. I mean, the global reaction since those attacks amongst young people in the English-speaking Western countries have really shown us that this ideological and moral rot on such a level that I don't think we've ever dreamed was possible is clearly evident. I know this past year has tested all of us, our hearts, our beliefs, our strength. And maybe you can also share with me in the comments how it's affected you and your relationships with your family, your friends, your circle of influence. Because a lot of people have been affected by what's happened. And if you've been following my posts or my various different platforms in telegram on facebook my youtube post section what used to be called the community tab section i've been still sharing with you um my thoughts on the situation and various other things and there's been a lot of a lot of pain a lot of sorrow a lot of grief Yesterday when I was trying to do my recording, I just broke down in tears. So I'm really holding myself together today by the grace of God that I stay focused and um, just hold it together. Thank you also for praying for my mum, the family situation. I really appreciate it. So let's move along with um, today's presentation. Top stories. <sighs> regarding October the 7th as you can see despite the fact that Israel is grieving and commemorating the loss the tragic events of that fateful day the pro-Palestinians campaigners protesters the violent mob they are violent are using that as an opportunity to fan the flames of their hatred of their cause for genocide against the Jews and that's what it's about friends how do we make sense of this well it's irrational hatred it's irrational it's evil it's demonic interesting Trump vows to remove the Jew haters if re-elected during events the election is another thing that is very tense right now in the USA. We know that the leftists, my goodness, the depravity of the left is so clearly on display now. There was a, I was on my Twitter page, wasn't I? There was something I wanted to share with you. In fact, I had... I had shared screenshots of this yesterday, I think it was. You know, there was a 45-minute video of actual events that took place last year on October the 7th that Israel, the state of Israel, had invited all journalists around the world to come and view. Well, that footage is now available. I haven't watched it because... I don't think I can go through it at the moment. I've seen photos because the world was demanding. Where's the evidence? 
if you follow his page for example let's just go there he's been he's basically categorized and collated all the evidence so he shared a post here what does it say if only I could speak my tears into this reply, you would know how devastating it is to see these images and videos. And as hard it is to read your emotional words, may Israel prevail in destroying this evil permanently. But the thing is, friends, what is this evil that many people are asking be destroyed? What exactly is it? Do you know? If you've been watching my videos, I think you know what we're talking about here. And such is the evil that has been unleashed on the world, especially in the West, that it's taken a lot of people by surprise. The mourners of those who were murdered brutally are shocked including the left in Israel, completely shocked. And those of us who pray for the peace of Jerusalem, I guess we're shocked at how openly violent and hateful these anti-Israel protesters have been out in the open. There's an interesting article I wanted to bring up because we've heard so many people talk about this... Um, concentration camp open air prison that the Palestinians have been um, living in but did you know this let's read some of this despite ostensible ban tens of thousands of Palestinians working in Israel they were prior to October the 7th and guess what they still are this is the idiocy of the Israeli government when will they learn? Although Defence Minister Nadiev barred entry of labourers into Israel after October the 7th because they welcomed them, there is no, there was no open air concentration camp in Gaza. None. A TV network says some 2,400 businesses have been exempted for humanitarian purposes. <sighs> they have a lot of carrots to give out, Israel. Despite a general ban imposed on the entry of Palestinian labourers into Israel following October 7 Hamas tax, tens of thousands of permit-carrying workers from the West Bank have been entering Israel on a daily basis according to a new report. And we know that that place is getting increasingly hostile because not only do they have Hamas sympathizers, supporters, they also have Hezbollah sympathizers and supporters in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria. Why would Israel tolerate such nonsense? Because that's what you call a democratic elected government. That's what you get. Channel 13 News said... A long list of Israeli businesses have managed to gain exemptions on humanitarian grants, allowing them to employ workers, despite the work in question having little or to no apparent connection to any pressing humanitarian need, including hotels, bakeries and furniture companies. They trusted the Palestinians to get their work permits from Gaza. These are Gazans who were given permits, work permits, to enter into Israel, thousands of them. And they betrayed Israel, stabbed them in the back. But yet the government, on the grounds of humanitarian need, is still permitting these questionable people, suspicious, prone to violence, to still enter and get jobs. Some 150 Palestinian workers from the West Bank and an additional, I want you to read that, let it sink in. Occupation, my foot. Settler colonialists, 
This is not what occupation looks like. This is not what an apartheid country looks like. Some 150,000 Palestinian workers from Judea and Samaria and an additional 80, let's just say 19,000 from the Gaza Strip used to enter Israel daily, daily before October the 7th. But the permits were frozen by the Defence Minister for security reasons following the devastating Hamas assault. We need to know that. And the other trusted organisation, United Nations Refugee Status, <coughs> UNRWA, is obviously being caught red-handed. It's just an outfit, friends, an outfit that's been receiving millions and billions of dollars from the EU, from the US, that has been swallowed up by the leadership of Hamas. That All that money... Billions of dollars. Where is it all gone? It all gone to this organisation. There's no audit. There's no checks and balances made. Instead, they were betrayed again. The Swiss parliamentarians vote to stop UNRWA funding. This was recently, a few weeks ago. The world is largely just ignorant. Intentionally turning a blind eye. Just because it's got a United Nations front, it's been given a license to continue its terrorism. All the evidence is out there. I'm not here to go through all of that because I really want us to get through the word of God, the scriptures, because clearly there are so many people still ignorant, confused, misunderstanding what is God's plan for the region, for the people of Israel for the surrounding nations and for the church. Why is this so important now? Because if we don't understand this now, we're gonna be misled and deception, as you know, is rife. And people are more prone to deception, to lies. The Swiss House of Reps voted on Monday to immediately halt payments to the UN's Relief and Works Agency over its ties to terrorism. But you know, the UK government, Starmer's government, has just reinstated their funding. So they all know full well the evidence that was provided that there were terrorists called staff, the staff members in this organization who were a part of those atrocities that, com that were committed on October the 7th. The decision which still needs to be approved by the Swiss Senate was the latest back and forth between the two governmental chambers over the funding to the agencies and mirrors similar moves taken last year. An Israeli intelligence report released earlier this year showed that at least a dozen UNRWA employees actively participated in Hamas October the 7th. This is like Amnesty International staff members, staff members receiving money that comes from all the West, all the Western nations give money, billions of dollars to this organization and they are actually involved in atrocities, jihadist violent terrorist activities against Israel. Why this isn't an outrage globally is beyond me. But that's the nature of evil that we're seeing right now. And this is all happening before the Antichrist is revealed. So it's a little glimpse into how it's actually going to look like when he is revealed. Because his minions are everywhere. And that the agency has hundreds of military operatives belonging to Hamas and other terrorist groups on its payroll. The revelations prompted 17 countries led by the US and Germany, UNRWA's biggest donors including Switzerland, to suspend funding. Nearly all 
have since resumed funding due to concern over the humanitarian situation in Gaza, which is self-inflicted humanitarian disaster. Self-inflicted. Needless. Unnecessary. But it's all self-inflicted. The United Nations Watchdog website have this, the case against UNRWA. How United Nations schools use our tax money to teach Palestinian children to hate and to kill Jews. But how many people actually believe that this is a fact? The minority? Because the majority disregard this fact. It's all about a war of narratives, friends. You've heard me say so many things on repeat. But it's important to recapitulate what I've always been saying. So we don't forget. Is there not really a life-saving organization? The truth is the opposite. New United, Wa United Nations Watch video shows how Justin Trudeau, Jordan's Queen Rania, Owen Jones, Catherine Colonna and many others mindlessly parrot UNRWA's false life-saving mantra. The truth is the opposite. UNRWA's actual purpose is to perpetuate hatred, war and terrorism. And what better way to do it under the guise of humanitarian causes? It's just like Pallywood. You know, all these videos that are floating around on social media of children beat up, blown up, bloodied and caught up in the rubbles. These are Palestinian victims, civilians. And how many times have we seen, how, it's countless times, we've seen these videos proven to be fake, orchestrated, actors, acting scenes, using children in their little drama show. How many times have we seen it? The blind are going to continue to be blind, friends. And those who see are the ones who can really see what's going on. Deception is rampant. Enough is enough. It's time to replace UNRWA. Over 160,000 activists have already joined the campaign. If you're interested, I'll attach the link. But then, does it make a difference, you guys? Does it actually make a difference? Let me refresh this, because this was from yesterday, I think. <clears throat> Trump attends October the 7th Remembrance event. Why is it about Trump? I've got October the 7th Israel. People are going over and reminding everybody of what took place on that day because even while the atrocities were being committed, while they were being live streamed, by the jihadists in real time people were still denying it happened they were actually denying the trust the evidence they were denying the evidence was legit so since yesterday everyone's refreshing everybody's memory and i think that's why i don't know if the israeli government have released the footage that 45 minute awful graphic footage of all the compila com compilation of all the videos that were available of what took place they've released it now because the world was demanding evidence right demanding evidence of burnt babies raped women mutilated bodies they wanted evidence so disgusting so sickening well i like to know where's the evidence of forty thousand palestinian deaths where's the evidence for it and if you're gonna cite hamas sources you're more blind than I thought you were. We're going to move on now to the word of God. Because this is a rabbit hole and I don't want to spend the majority of my time streaming this. In this rabbit hole. What do we make of... What's happening right now? 
The word of God tells us in so many places, friends. I mean, there's witness after witness after witness, beginning in the prophets, even in the book of Deuteronomy, about God's plan, his purpose for the people he elected, he chose, he handpicked for a reason. That salvation would come through these people by Jesus Christ. The promise he made to Abraham that would bless the entire world. The people who gave the world the Bible. So it's a no-brainer. We understand this is what's at the heart of it. So many scriptures that we have to understand and go through. In my poster I made earlier today, I really sincerely request you go back and read it and read through all those chapters and verses that I provided. It was from the book of Ezekiel, from the book of Jeremiah and the book of Romans, but there are so many more, but it's enough for today, for your homework. If we don't understand, well, let's first of all go to Romans. I'm coming back to Isaiah. Because there's so many Christians who don't understand it. You have to ask yourself, at what point, at what point are they going to realize they got it wrong? When it's too late, then it's too late. And what do I mean by that? When the king of glory himself shows up, it's going to be too late. Now, St. Paul who wrote this epistle to the Romans, understood this, this mystery regarding God's purposes for Israel and the Gentiles. It was a mystery, friends, a peculiar mystery even expressed to us in the book of Isaiah when the Lord says, it's too small a thing that I should make you, my servant, the servant Jesus, a light to redeem Israel, I will also make you a light to the Gentiles. So God's plan has always been for the whole world. But he has a method. There's a specific roadmap to get there. Yes? Listen to these words of St. Paul. I've got some maps, some charts we're going to go through. Because I need to show you and remind you the region, pri primary region where the Antichrist is going to come out from. We're going to come to these maps in a moment to remind us. And how the word of God told us. And I'm not paranoid. I've been talking about Turkey for the longest time of things I can remember. In fact, it was only a couple of years into my salvation when the Lord saved me. So we're talking about 2004, 2005. I was baptized in 2002, so just about two years into it. I knew the Lord was showing me Turkey back then. Way back. So I trust the Lord when he reveals to me what he wants me to know and there's a reason why he gives it to me so I can share it with you Paul writes here in Romans chapter 9 but it's like almost before we even get here to Romans 9 if we have not understood what the prophets of old were declaring we're not going to understand the New Testament Romans chapter 9 because Paul understood what was written in the word of God back then that was the Bible for them, remember? So, let's read this portion before we move on. Let's just understand this part at least before we move on. I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. That I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart imagine carrying a burden like that and I'm holding it together right now myself I've got my hand on my chest <sighs> 
because I'm feeling that way every day. Great sorrow and continual grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen according to the flesh. He's talking about Israel, his countrymen according to the flesh. He's not spiritualizing it. So who is real Israel today, you might ask. The people that are in Israel are Israel. But the scripture also tells us that those who are of Israel are not all Israel. Why? It's not a riddle. It's not a dilemma. If you have the Holy Spirit, he will give you discernment to discern and divide rightly the word. Because of the new covenant, the new covenant given to us in the blood of Jesus Christ has broken down this separation between Jew and Gentile, male and female. Everybody and anyone who wants to come into Christ and be grafted into the root are a part of the people of God. The Israel of God that God desires are Israel, the countrymen, according to the flesh, that are or that have been circumcised in the heart. It's still Israel. But the kind of Israel he seeks for are those who have accepted the Messiah and have accepted the blood of Jesus and entered into the new covenant as are many Jews who believe in Jesus are being doing right now if you look at the ministries of one for Israel another ministry is called so be it testimony after testimony of Jews who believe in Jesus who have entered into the new covenant and received the Messiah according to the flesh these are those Jews who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption the glory what does this mean the glory of God Almighty was revealed to them in a tangible manifestation on Mount Sinai he chose this particular people group according to the flesh. Let me just reiterate. To reveal his glory specifically to Moses. The people saw the terrible sight that terrified them. The thunder, the lightning, the fires, the earthquake, the voices of trumpets. Israel witnessed and only this people group that the Lord chose have seen the glory of God. Do you understand now the burden that lies with them because he appointed them? Paul understood all this. Let's repeat. To whom pertain, to who? His countrymen according to the flesh who are Israelites who were scattered, went throughout all the world, and God has promised to bring them back, which they have been in, they are back in the land. And we're going to go through those scriptures. So just take a deep breath. To whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, the promises, of whom are the fathers and from whom he's repeating the point according to the flesh Christ came who is over all the eternally blessed God Amen this is why Israel is under attack this is why there is a what we think irrational murderous hatred for the Jews 
And when they are confronted, the haters of the Jews, with their hatred of the Jews specifically, not Zionism, but the Jews, they respond with, we oppose Zionism. We oppose the genocide of Palestinians committed by the state and government of Israel. They word it with all this flowery language to cover up the real intention, which is rooted in a spiritual darkness, a hatred of the Jews. Now, some of these people might not even realize the depravity of this demonic hatred. But I'm, I'm inclined to think some of them do and they are relishing in it. Because there comes a point in a person's soul where you're so given over to hatred of the demonic kind that you're taken over by it and you begin to relish in it. It's, it's called sadistic, it's sadism, right? And if you go back to... Let me just... How do I go back there? All right. If you go back, I'm going to show you some graphic things. If you don't want to see it, please look away. This is exactly what we are witnessing. The dark, demonic depravity of this hatred against the Jewish people, the people of Israel, according to the flesh, the Israelites, then you begin to understand it. How is it possible that pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinians can justify it? Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Because the darkness is so dark, they're able to justify it, to explain it away. Where you and I are like shocked. But how? How is this possible? I don't understand. Do you understand now? Some stats concerning the Nova Festival. Almost 4,000 attendees, 410 were murdered, 62 were kidnapped, over 1,000 were injured. 364 were murdered on the day. Some of the kidnapped were later killed. Sadly, there are those who have since taken their own lives. Many of them have committed suicide due to the trauma of that day and what they saw, what they experienced. He continues to explain and testify. Post number three. What's most disturbing and unimaginable isn't just that these innocent unarmed ravers were murdered. It's what came after. Many were mutilated, burned and left in grotesque, unnatural positions. Some were shot directly with RPGs, some had completely, had complete clips, bang, 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 emptied on them. So you have a demonic display of murder. Things that you wouldn't even imagine human, humans were capable of actually committing, right? But because this is all out in the open now, and because people are still in denial, rejecting it, minimizing it, gaslighting, projection and all of that, at what point would those in the Christian world understand what we are dealing with is a demonic hatred against Israel and the Jews? It's not about the Palestinians. They've just been a massive pawn that have been used in order to garner world sympathy and to expand the armies who are going to align to one day come against and invade the land. One of the most gut-wrenching videos is of an officer's body cam with some IDF soldiers who arrived to the festival around noon too late. To find tens of bodies of mostly girls who were hiding around the bar. Other than those kidnapped, no one was spared. And so he goes on. Showing you all the evidence. And it's very, very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. It's on my Twitter page. I shared the post. 
So Paul, think about what he's thinking. No wonder he said he has great sorrow and continual grief. Because he knew, according to what was revealed in the prophets, that this people, the countrymen, according to the flesh, and again, according to the flesh, Christ came, these people are going to go through horrendous judgments, chastisements. First comes the rejection, the chastisements, then comes the judgments. And then afterward, the remnant are spared, redeemed, delivered, and the kingdom of Israel is restored. So when we remember that the Lord Jesus Christ, even John the Baptist, the Lord kept saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he commissioned his followers to go into all the world, beginning in Jerusalem, to preach the kingdom of God. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached. What kingdom? Do you ever stop to wonder, what's the kingdom spoken of here? Think about it, you guys. What was the kingdom in the Old Testament? It was the kingdom of Israel. And I'm not about to go into all the history, but there was a, a season where it became a divided kingdom. There was a division, a split, a schism in the kingdom of Israel, north and south. And ever since that time, I think a lot of people have been confused about what well, God's done away with them because he allowed this to happen. He called himself a husband, yet he says he's now divorced them because of their harlotry, their adulterous ways, and that's the end of it. No, no, no. Let us now go. We'll come back to Romans. Let's go to Jeremiah. How are you doing so far? Are you enjoying this? I hope it's beneficial to you. It's not for enjoyment. I've gone through these verses before and ideally it'd be very good to go through entire chapters because it's going to take you and me reading entire chapters consecutively in order to understand the counsel of God regarding the situation, Israel, the land, even the church. Where do we all fit in? Because what happens when you read it in its context, you get the bigger picture, simply put, right? Now, you'll have ministries out there, Chuck Baldwin and the likes, <clears throat> anti-Jewish or anti-Semites, who pick and choose which verses they're going to read. They pick and choose them. They n you'll never find them reading scriptures in context. And this is the danger of mishandling the word of God with such lack of reverence and respect. God will judge those people for doing that, for misleading thousands, if not millions of sheep. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel. Write in a book for yourself all the words that I've spoken to you, for behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Here we go. That the Lord, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity. So the Lord is the one who scattered his own people. That was the result of their rebellion. Agreed? Okay. But that's not the end of it, is it? Why do people just stop right there and not read, read the rest? I will bring back, <clears throat> excuse me, from captivity, my people, Israel and Judah. There's a divided kingdom. Israel, house of Israel and house of Judah in the south. Says the Lord. 
so he's going to bring back both houses, and I will cause them to return to the land. What could the cause be? Well, we can speculate, but we know that there was persecutions when they were in exile. They were driven back to the land, and then again, post the Holocaust time, they were driven back to the land, and that's when you had 1948. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. But Israel today, the state of Israel, is not God's plan. Who are you to say that? Muslims or Jews or Christians. And there are those leftist Jews. Oh, such is the ignorance. Everything we need to know is all revealed to us in the word of God. It's all right here. Look no further. You don't need no specialist, no Middle East expert, no analyst. You need the word of God. We all need it, believer or non-believer. If you're a non-believer, consider this as a work of history. It's written. This is a fact. The chosen people, right? Who said they were chosen? The word of God, the Bible. So does it not make sense to read that book that declares them to be the chosen? What else is revealed in that book? What other information is in there? Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah, the two houses, right? So he's restoring them. They're going to possess it. But it doesn't bring a time of peace in the land. And this is precisely what happened after 1948. You would think there'd be peace in the land. Because God is the one who's got them back in the land. So surely his purpose was to make everything good. He's brought them back. He's kept his promises. But yet that's not what we see. History shows us it's been nothing but war and chaos and a very difficult time for the people of Israel and for the people who lived there prior, Arabs. <clears throat> it's been nothing but chaos. But it's not like the word of God never told us. He told us right here. In fact, this particular scripture is showing us how bad it's going to get. And this is since the Lord has kept his promise to bring them back after the captivity. So this erroneous thought that some Christians hold, well, if, it's, if God is the one who restored them, why didn't he bring peace? Why are they treating the Palestinians like this? Why is this happening? Why is there trouble in the West Bank? All this political jargon, nonsense. <clears throat> People who talk like that are devoid of scriptural, biblical understanding. And I admit, it gets to me. It does. What more can God do? He's done everything on his part. And you've heard me read this many times. This is what is referenced as the time of Jacob's trouble. So the Lord brings them back only that they go through Jacob's trouble? Yes. Why? Because. This is how I, I best understand it. I hope it makes sense to you. When the Lord, the God of Israel, deals with his people, Israel, he deals with them on a one-to-one -one basis in the land. Okay? He brings them home and deals with them there. Not only that, God, the God of Israel, is also going to deal with his enemies who surround Israel. Where is he going to deal with them? When they come to his land. So, mysterious, yes? But marvelous in God's ways because his ways are not like ours.
Does that make sense? That's okay if it doesn't. It will. Just bear with me. But he shall be saved out of it. None is going to be like this day. It's going to be that bad. But he's going to be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble will be so bad. Oh, we saw a glimpse of what the Lord is trying to show us. It was pretty bad, right? October the 7th. Horrific, horrendous. And Israel says that it was the worst, the worst thing that's ever happened to the Jewish people since the Holocaust. So, wake up, world. Let's pay attention. What is happening here is only going to get worse. Because God has a plan. There's a purpose. <clears throat> and it's going to require our patience, our courage, and it's going to require that we don't lose hope. Because of the word of God has declared to us the end from the beginning. The return of the Messiah is coming. So after all this, he says, Therefore do not fear, my servant Jacob, says the Lord. Don't be dismayed, O Israel. Behold, I will save you from afar. So wherever the Jews are, scattered still currently, in all these other countries, they're not in their rightful place, are they? They ought to be back at home in the land because that is where the Lord is going to deal with them. So when we see these violent mobs out there, these protesters, the vile pro Hamas supporters, are literally flying the banners of Hamas and Hezbollah, it's making life very difficult for the Jews in USA, in the UK, in Europe. Wherever these hateful bunch are going around intimidating them. Eventually, friends, eventually it's going to be so bad. <clears throat> our governments are not going to be able to control it. They're not controlling it right now, are they? They're letting it happen. <clears throat> all these Jewish students on campuses across the West and the USA are terrified. Their families are terrified. Our governments are doing nothing. Okay? But he's going to save them from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. This is how the Lord causes them to come back into the land. The same thing that happened during the Holocaust. They went back home. They had a place called home. And their home is under attack. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Though I make a full end, sobering words. It's so simple if we just read these final few words here. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you. Full end of all those nations where the Jews have been scattered. Yet I will not make a complete end of you. But I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. This is what it's about. So we need to <clears throat> gather ourselves, refocus, get grounded back into the word of God and understand, although the heartbreak is immense, of course, I mean, I should know, it's bothered me ever since it happened. I mean, with my family, if you don't know, my whole family kind of turned against me. I say my whole family, I'm still on talking terms with my mum and dad, but my siblings, my sister, my brother have just, anyway, they've made it very clear. We know the end. 
we know what's going to happen. And this is all about God's plan. All of it. Nothing takes us by surprise. So we remind ourselves. But even in this chapter, if we continue... Those that plunder you shall become plunder. The tables are going to turn eventually. Eventually the tables are going to turn. And God is the one who's going to do it. So ask yourself. Why would God do that to this people Israel. Who he's apparently rejected. Done away with. And all he has now is the church as his bride. Why would, why would people say that? Because of due hatred. It's evil. It's demonic. It really is as simple as that. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured. <clears throat> like a boomerang, it's going to go back and hit them on the head. They're going to pay for everything that they've done. They're going to reap what they sowed. And all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. You see, our God has a law. In, in his law, there's a law of sowing and reaping. You reap what you sow. That's why the Lord Jesus is a commandment to do unto others as he would have them do unto you. The golden rule, right? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And those who hate you, <clears throat> with the way they hate you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire. <clears throat> Excuse me? All your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those that plunder you shall become plunder. And all who pray upon you, I will make pray. For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion. No one seeks her. And if you notice lately, the narratives out there, <clears throat> the pro Hamas supporters are all parading and boasting Israel is losing the narrative they're losing support in the West this is what it's about it's to isolate the Jews isolate Israel and remove their support that they get from the West the USA the UK this is what it's about so when we have these people who are immigrants who come into these nations and are taking over filling filling in the vacuum that was created by absent Christianism or Christian Christianity in the public arena, you create a vacuum, they've come in, it's all intentional. God has allowed it all to happen. I would say for the same reasons he's allowing it to happen to Israel. Punishment, judgment, chastisement. <clears throat> Whatever Israel is going to go through, you are going to go through. We are going to go through as the church. So don't look at this as some isolated event just affecting Israel and you've heard Benjamin Netanyahu saying we are fighting for the world this war that we're at war with with all these hateful people I mean on seven different fronts they're under attack they're doing it for the world because those people who are attacking Israel are coming after the West they're already in the West they're just looking at our patience our threshold of temperance how far can we go and how far can they push it and they're pushing it. They're crossing the boundaries for sure. <clears throat> to isolate Israel. Pin the blame on Zionism. The anti-Zionist. Blah, blah, blah. But we are wiser than that. We understand the counsel of God. Now if you go into Jeremiah chapter 1. At that same time, says the Lord, how can we get away from this? You know, one of the first things that I was in love with after the Lord Jesus, when I came to faith in Jesus, was the Bible. <laughs> the Word of God is telling us everything we need to know. Everything we need to know. To understand his purpose. You know. I'm one of those people who wants to know. 
the reason. I want to know why. And I'm sure you're like that too. That's why you listen to my videos. At the same time, the Lord says, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. What do you want to do with this? If Israel has been done away with and if the church has replaced Israel, is all this nonsense still going on out there? It drives me bonkers, friends. It's incredibly frustrating because if people would just read, you know, you've got all these learn, learned people out there, these theologians and these apologists, and they think they know. They think they are educated on the word of God. The more educated they brag themselves to be, the more foolish they're displaying themselves to be. Ignorant, ignorant fools. This is how people disrespect the word of God by mishandling it without any reverence, without respect. At the same time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Do you remember there was a time when he said, you are no longer my people? What does it say? It says that in the book of Ephesians. You were once called not my people, but now you have become my people. I mean, this is who our God is. He's a God of redemption, the God of restoration. He restores, he redeems. This is within his character to do so. Because it's his desire that none perish, but that all come to salvation. This is his desire, right? But how to deal with rebellion? You've got to see it from God's point of view, his perspective. How to deal with rebellion. Now the consequences for rebellion were placed on our Lord Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, on the cross. The sin, the iniquity, the transgression, all of the rebellion of not just Israel, but mankind, was dealt with at the cross of Jesus. And so we receive acceptance now. Those who were once rejected can now be accepted in the beloved, like it again says in Ephesians, through the blood of Jesus. That's the only criteria for everybody, including Israel and including the Gentiles. It's one rule for everybody. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, Israel, when I went to give him rest. And one of the most famous verses in the Bible is written here. The Lord has appeared of old to me saying, Yes, I've loved you with an, an, an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt, O Virgin of Israel. Isn't that most beautiful portion of scripture that you've ever read? True love. You're reading and you're hearing the words of true love. Now, our Lord Jesus is that Messiah, the one. He's the one who they were betrothed to during the first covenant, the old covenant. He's the same one who died for his bride, but is now resurrected as the second man. He died as the last Adam, but he rose again as the second man glorious so there's a promise I've scattered you and I'm going to gather you but you're going to go through a time of great trouble but even through that time I'm going to save you Israel and when I save you all your enemies are going to see it they're going to know it because I'm going to judge all those nations that attacked you Because of my chastisement, they wounded you. He's going to make an end of all those other nations, wherever they were scattered. We're going to move on to the book of Ezekiel. But I want you to also... <laughs> I want you to move on to the next chapter of Jeremiah 32. Thirty, thirty-three, 
I mean, the word of God, especially in the prophets, he repeats himself over and over again. So I'm not the only one who likes to repeat myself. I learned it from the Father. <laughs> he repeats himself, so it sinks in. It's that we find it hard to understand God's mind, but his mind is revealed to us, so we don't find it hard to understand. For thus is the Lord, the God of Israel. Look how many times he's called the God of Israel. This is why Israel is under attack, because he is the God of Israel. And if you're Satan and you have um, an ancient hatred against God Almighty, the creator of the world, what are you going to do? Go after his most precious, prized possession. His very own people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of the city and the houses of the kings of Judah, which have been pulled down to fortify against the siege mounds and the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but only to fill their places with dead bodies of men, whom I will slay my anger, my fury, for all those wickedness I've hidden my face from this city. Why did he hide his face from them? This good reason why the Lord hides his face, he turns away, is because of sin. Do you recall why the Lord, when he was on the cross and he cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God. For the first time ever, the Lord Jesus Christ was abandoned by the Father. The first time his prayer was not answered because he took on sin. The burden, the penalty and the consequences of this wicked rebellion that we're all guilty of but if you've come to faith in Jesus and acknowledge him as your perfect sacrifice and you receive the redemption that is available through his blood you're now grafted in and this grafting is Israel who were the natural branches it says in Romans this beautiful tree some of the branches were cut off because of unfaithfulness and God went out to the Gentiles, grabbed some Gentiles who were wild and grafted them, Gentiles, into this olive tree, which was natural by nature. So we become one tree. That's the body of Christ. What a beautiful picture. But when God turns his way, and he did, it's because of sin. He hid his face on the city. Behold, I will bring it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. Did you hear that? In this short portion that we're reading, he's revealing the whole entire plan that he has for the people. I will cause the captives of Judah and the captives of Israel to return. Is he repeating himself? Of course he is. This is telling us how important this is in the narrative of the Holy Bible. You know, it has a narrative. And a lot of the narrative is about God's love for his people. You can't take that away from the Bible. You don't have a Bible if you remove it. Glorious. This is why it. this motivates me. This, what do you call it? I'll never depart from the faith. I will never depart from the faith. There's no one who loves like the God of Israel. There's nobody who is faithful like the God of Israel. There's nobody who pardons iniquities, forgives transgressions and restores us. Nobody like the God of Israel who is the God of all the earth. I will cause the captives of Judah and the captives of Israel to return and will rebuild those places as at the first. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us here. 
I know I have all these other tabs to go through. I'm mindful of it, but this is important as well. I will cleanse them. Who are you? Who are you to demean, denigrate, dehumanize the Jews? Who are you? When the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, says, I will cleanse them from all the iniquity by which they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities by which they have sinned and by which they have transgressed against me. Then it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all nations of the earth, who shall hear all the good that I do to them. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I provide for it. Take that. I mean, come on now. Praise the Lord. Doesn't that deserve? Thank you, Lord God. Glory be to your name. You are so faithful, O oh Lord. We are so faithless. You are forever true and we are all liars. God said it. Let it be, said, let it be done and let us say amen. Now, we could spend more time in this wonderful book, but this is a video. I've got to move on because people's attention span nowadays is not very big, is it? Ezekiel 38. Now, this usually, I don't know about nowadays, usually gets people a little bit more excited. Gog and Magog invasion. Ezekiel 38. But do we understand what it is? Do we still really think that Russia is the leader of this coalition of Islamic nations? I will say, and I have said, and I have a playlist for that, of course. <laughs> I have a playlist section. I have devoted a playlist to the Gog and Magog. Please check it out. I would disagree that Russia is the head chief leader of the Islamic nations invasion against Israel and Arabia. Will Russia be one of the players? Will Russia play a part? Um, yeah, well, of course, of course. Because now Russia, since the Russia-Ukraine thing, is now further isolated from the West, is naturally gravitating east to China, to Turkey, to Iran. So naturally they're moving in that direction, right? <clears throat> Russia and Syria. <clears throat> All about interests, friends. Strategic interests. Now, we're not here yet, but we're going in this direction. We're not here yet, but this is where we're headed. Israel and Arabia are headed in this direction because the invasion comes to Israel and to Arabia. I've spoken about this in a lot of detail. I'm not really going to go through all of that again right now. But if you really are interested, it's definitely worth checking out that playlist, Gog and Magog. If you want all the little nitty gritty, I do go through it with a lot of detail. So let's read the portion and I want to take you through a little concordance because it's important to just nip this in the bud quickly and move on, right? The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, to Ezekiel, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. He's the leader of this particular region. The prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tuba. Now the wording throws people off. Rather than the prince of Rosh, that simply is saying, he's the head chief ruler. He's the prince, princely ruler over Meshach and Tubal. Rosh is not a geographic location. It's not a geographic location. Just as when the Jews every year say Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the new year that day, Rosh is the head, the prince, chief ruler over Magog, over Meshach, over Tubal. 
and prophesy against him. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince, chief, head ruler of Meshach and Tubal. Now, God is the one who is going to orchestrate this. I want us to know. As frightening and terrifying as this scenario is going to look when it happens, let us remember God is the one who has orchestrated it. I'll turn you around, put hooks in your jaws and lead you out with all your army, horses, horsemen and splendidly clothed, a great company. Why does he do that? Because God wants to destroy his enemies. His enemies. Yes, I said that. The enemies of Israel are the enemies of God. Now let's zoom out. Why is Israel under attack? Why is the narrative turning against Israel on a global scale? Because he's the God of Israel. And when you come against Israel, you come against the God of Israel. So this is a demonic hatred going on right now. And this alliance with the Marxists and Islamists is a part of this hatred. They're declaring their anger against the Holy One of Israel, who is the God of all the universe. Now, he says he's going to turn them around. He's going to bring them with all their splendid armor, with all their equipment, including the people of Persia, Ethiopia, at the time of writing, Ethiopia was larger, it's since been divided. There's Sudan. The portion here is talking to Sudan. And I've got a video on this. Did you know that Sudan has a port island which has been leased to Turkey? And Turkey is building a military base over there. It's called Suakin Island. And not only that region, Turkey is building a heavy military presence in Somalia. And it's going to do the same thing in Libya. Why? Because Turkey is the chief head prince ruler of this coalition. Turkey. <clears throat> so all these peoples, all the ship, Goma, all his troops, the house of Togoma, from the far north, all its troops, many people are with you. Let's go to the wording. i just have to show it to you. Okay, good job, Sonia. Good job. I did have that up there. So now, I'm in the Ezekiel 38 interlinear in the Hebrew. All right? I'm just going to do this for some of you. Because there's some of you out there just not going to be like, oh, yeah, but, no, but. All right, listen. Gog. Let's hover our mouse. I don't know if you can see it. But the number one definition of the word used here is mountain. The prophetic prince of Rosh Meshach Tuba Magog, a Reubenite, son of Shemaiah. But chiefly, huh, pardon the pun, chiefly, he is chief. He is Gog, the mountain. Set your face against Gog, the Rosh of head, top, the summit, upper part. This is what Rosh means. Let me repeat. The head. Gog is the mountain, head, top, the summit, the upper part, the chief. He's the leader of the pack. In simpler terms, he's the leader of the pack. The prince. The one lifted up. The chief, the prince, the captain, the leader. Does this make sense to you now? It's not Russia. Gog is the chief princely ruler of the region. Of the names listed, the countries mis listed. Magog. Magog, land of Gog. Second son of Japheth. I've gone through all this before. Number two. The mountainous region between Cappadocia and Media. And guess what that land is? Turkey, Azerbaijan. Huh. 
You see, I'm not paranoid. I'm not obsessed with talking about those nations. There's a reason. <clears throat> Keeping an eye on what's been going on between Azerbaijan and Armenia is all significant because they want to do their own corridor. While Israel and the Arabs in the south with whom they are in accord with the Abraham Accords are also working towards their own land corridor land and sea corridor so there's a lot more going on here between the northern nations of israel and the southern nations of israel which is why i say this is a northern and southern conflict it's not just with israel i've i've spoken about these things in a lot more detail in my older videos so this leader of the Gog armies of Magog and the region is Turkey, Azerbaijan, primarily Cappadocia, Media and habitation of the descendants of Magog. It's the mountainous region between Cappadocia and Media. Will Russia join in? I, I'm saying yeah, but I'm saying it's the Islamic Muslim peoples of the Russian regions that will most likely join in this coalition to take it from themselves. Here's an old map. Here's an old map right here. <clears throat> well, we now Magog should be further down because Cappadocia was here. Let's move on. <clears throat> I've got more to share. I won't read all of this, but I, I think I might have to. Where is Meshach and Tubal? This is for the benefit of those of you who are new and you want to get a little bit more information about this, okay? <clears throat> is it Russia? Is it Turkey? All right. Just one moment, bear with me. I've got a customer okay <clears throat> sorry customer i'll have to wait some believe right tubal meshek are mentioned together ezekiel 38 they were the fifth and sixth sons of japheth right some believe these people intermarried and became known as magog the dominant tribe there are two main theories for their location and this is what this little paper is written about number one to russia number two turkey Whichever it, it is does not change the overall picture as both are identified by other names in Ezekiel. Regarding Meshach and Tubal, some assign Russian identification connecting these two nations with the modern Russian cities of Moscow to, to Blosk, which is nonsense. It's not. That's the name Moscow derives from, but I just told you what Rush means. Well, I just went over it with you in the Hebrew. It means mountain, head the top the chief which is good because then i don't know, need need to repeat this let's go to what this study paper says here <clears throat> i can attach this to the bottom i'm at the bottom expositors bible commentary mishek tubal refers to areas in eastern turkey southwest of russia and northwest of iran assyrian texts and monuments locate mishek and Dubal in Anatolia, Western Turkey, <clears throat> the areas that became known as Fijia and Cappadocia. Mark Hitchcock concludes Meshach and Dubal are identified in history with Mushkin and Tubal of the Assyrians and the Mushkin and Tiberini of the Greeks, and you just love these ancient names, who inhabited territory in modern Turkey. Today, this region is predominantly Islamic, and that alone, we know this, don't we? It doesn't matter what side of this view you're on, that Russia's the lead or Turkey's the lead, we can at least agree it's predominantly Islamic. Now that should tell you something about the Antichrist, the system of the beast. Now when God does away with the Gog Magog armies, which he does, He restores the kingdom of Israel.
soon after that. Yes, that's correct. That's the order of events. When God destroys, and I believe it's the Lord Jesus, the one who appears in all his glory in that earthquake that's mentioned in Ezekiel 38, 39. When the Lord Jesus destroys the armies, he sets up the kingdom, the millennium reign in Israel. So this is towards the end, isn't it? This conflict, this invasion. While modern Turkey has been secular, pro-Western, with a good relationship with Israel, particularly military, recently, so I don't know how long this paper was written, but wow, things changed. Recently, Turkey has swung back towards a return to a stronger Islamic and anti-Israel identification, which means that Ezekiel's prophecy could be ready to be fulfilled any time now. I wouldn't say any time now, but I, I'm saying he's right, but <clears throat> it's not imminent because it's just not imminent right now. Because in my view, and I've shared this, I've done a proper study of the word of God regarding this Gog and the Antichrist, they are one and the same character. <clears throat> Later migrations north from Turkey to Russia could mean that both identifications are valid, and indeed both Turkey and Russia are directly north of Israel. In any case, between them, Magog, Rosh, Meshach, bless his heart, is still emphasizing that. It is not a place, it's not a geographic location. Meshach and Tuba certainly represent Russia leading the CIS republics, which are all Islamic, all of them are Islamic, along with Turkey. Well, you think the Muslim nations have got an in invested interest in liberating Jewish land for themselves and make it the capital city of the revived caliphate? Of course they do. And in order for them to do it, they need a unification of different types of Muslims, whether it's Russian, Persian, Arab, Turkic, Azeri Muslims. They're going to unite for this one sole purpose, to destroy Israel. It's not going to happen, though, is it? We know it's not going to happen. Instead, they are going to be destroyed. The invasion from the north. Yeah, we all agree with this. The invasion is coming from the north. Cappadocia. There you go. The word of God in the concordance told us Magog is Turkey. So Gog, the chief ruler, is a ruler over this region. Not only that, it includes the region of Azerbaijan. Huh, yes. The very people, the country, that Israel has been supplying arms to. Because they've got a deal, mutual deal. You give us gas and we will give you weapons. It's just a business contract. It's a transaction between two countries. Oh. Lord. Another one. Kingdom of Cappadocia. So expect more rhetoric coming out of um, Turkey. The majority of Muslims in Russia live in the North Caucasus republics, the republics of Tartarsan, Bashkatorsan, and the capital city of Moscow. The Muslim community enjoys freedom to practice their religious rituals and participate in community activities organized during the holy month what's this map global muslim population country by map okay i'm highlighting russia as you can see 16 is that 16 million kazakhstan these are all the Magog peoples, I believe. <clears throat> the Meshechs, the Tubals, the Gomers are all going to join in. These are Islamic peoples. So this is a formidable force, a formidable army that God, remember, is the one who's going to set up the scenario. 13 million Muslim population, Kazakhstan. Uzbekistan, 29 million in that tiny little country. Turkmenistan, 5.6 million. Turkey, 84.4 million. Can't even get to that tiny one there. 
Azerbaijan, 10 million. Syria, 15 million. Iraq, 39 million. Let's look at Iran, 82 million. So, this formidable force, because it includes Persia, is coming to invade tiny little Israel. Is Israel even on this map? Oh my goodness, you can't even get your hand to Israel. Look at it. 1.5 million. You see the irrational hatred. But the thing is, it's not irrational, is it? It's demonic. It's evil. It's from Satan. So, that might give you some context of what it's going to look like. If you want Russia, fine. You got it. You want Turkey? Absolutely right. Turkey is the head chief ruler that's going to drag all these nations together to invade not only Israel, but Arabia, Sheba and Dudan. You know the scriptures, it's all there in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Muslims in Russia, Tartars take up the majority, the people groups. There's a load of Muslims in Russia. And they'll all be invested. Because this one leader, the Antichrist, is going to be able to unite them. I mean, we know through the book of Daniel and also through Revelation, there are ten leaders. Chief leaders that give their power and authority in this coalition to the beast. So, that's all yet to come. It's, it's crazy because all this part of the world, all over here, Europe, US, are losing the narrative war. It's turning against Israel. But do you know, the people who are pro-Hamas, they make the loudest noise. And if you pay attention, there is a lot of support for Israel, a lot. But the people who make the loudest noise seem like they're, they're getting all the attention. And so it seems really bad. It's not. It's just that when the man of sin is revealed, all his followers who live in all these nations are going to rise up. Yes, that's why it's going to go down. They're going to rise up and start attacking everyone. Because our governments are not doing anything. Our governments are allowing it to get this bad. I mean, they've let it get to this extent that the Jews are terrified of even living in these countries. Even politicians are being harassed outside their homes. So it's telling us the signs are all around. How much longer have I got? I didn't time this video. Turkey, other one. Israel will eventually pay price for Gaza genocide. It's not a genocide. It's these people who are the genocidal murderers. It's all projection. They accuse Israel of what they themselves do and have been doing. Remember that. Turkish lawmakers discuss Mideast in closed session after Erd Erdogan's Israel claim. Israel will pay a price. Turkish parliament discusses Israel's attack, attack plans in closed session. Erdogan finally enters Israel war. Turkey Navy ships headed to Lebanon amid IDF invasion. <clears throat> in order for this to be the Gog you, we, we just read this scripture there's going to be a coalition of nations so will we expect to see more wars and then a subdued season of relative calm and then more wars until that one yes because Saudi Arabia is yet to come and sign the Abraham Accords of Israel. I brought this up because remember Erdogan was the guy who said Jerusalem is a red line for Muslims. He made a speech about it. Jerusalem's a red line for Muslims? No, it's a red line for Jews. But these people are supersessionists, replacement theologists. All they know is how to subjugate, <clears throat> eradicate and dominate.
I'm just making sure I'm checking what's going on here. Iran will regret its latest attack on Israel. Israel has not briefed the US military official on its plans for retaliation against Iran. Good. I don't think they can trust you anymore. So far, the military chain of command of the Hezbollah terrorist organization. This was pretty recently. I think it was. Let me see if I have that page. I have the IDF page here. Let me see if I can refresh it. If I can refresh it, we can see the latest posts 12 hours ago. Still confused about the threat that exists on our northern front. And that's where the major threat is going to come from. It's from the north. Gog's armies are coming from the north. The invasion is coming from the north. In the book of Joel, where the word of God tells us that half of the city will be taken. The house is taken, the women ravished and what have you. It was so eerily similar to what happened on October the 7th, which was primarily in the south, wasn't it, Gaza? But this one, this final huge battle is coming from the north. And they discovered, the IDF discovered and shared the intel that they received when they found out Hezbollah actually planned something more heinous than what Hamas committed on October the 7th. Hezbollah was going to join in and take over the Galilee. <clears throat> but thank God it was prevented. You see, everything that's happening, God is in control. Because right now, God is holding back to a degree the threat. But then the time is coming when, just like as we read in Ezekiel 38, he's going to cause them to come into the land. It's all about time, season. There's a season for it. Recap of Hezbollah's attacks. Over 12,500 projectiles have been fired into Israeli territory. This is not about Palestinians. This is about Jew hatred. It's as simple as that. It's about Jew hatred. Notice how these pro-Hamas sympathizers parade this thing. They keep parroting it. The whole region was perfectly fine until the Jews came, the Zionists came, yeah, as long as you're a subdued people and you know you're subdued and you're dominated by Islam, we can live in peace. But the moment you show self-determination, set up your own state and say we are the people of the book, <laughs> the Bible, and we have our state back reborn, what do we expect is going to happen? All the narcissists come out, right? 60,000 plus Israeli civilians have been evacuated. Imagine. Since that time. Hardly anyone talks about that either on the media. Or the media is all a part and parcel of this narrative. All the mainstream media. They're all parroting the agenda of the beast. Look what's happened to the BBC. How they've fallen from grace. What a disgrace. The Israeli dictionary wrote itself on the morning of October the 7th. Hide and seek. A known childhood game commonly played with friends and family. Right, they're just obviously showing. <clears throat> they're protecting so many people. Post about the Houthis who they really are. Murderous hatred against Jews. Thanks to Islam. Thanks to Muhammad. A map showing you Meshach and Tubal, Meshach, Magog, ancient Cappadocia, media. Interesting that eventually these lands are going to landlock and form a coalition, which is what they want. Azerbaijan want this. Iran does not want this. Iran wants to keep its interests as a priority while well, these two want to keep their interests as a priority by keeping that corridor for themselves, quashing and genociding the Armenians, which they've been doing. They've been genociding Armenians while October the 7th happened. 
Because meanwhile, in the background, this was taking place. And it's been going on for the past five years. Azerbaijan's Armenian corridor is a challenge to the global rules-based order. They're going to do it. <clears throat> they're going to they're gonna do it. It's going to happen. There's no stopping it. And a lot of Armenians are very disgruntled and angry with Israel. And rightly so. Because of them and their... What they what what the governments of Azerbaijan and Israel consider are just economic deals, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. But at the expense of the ethnic cleansing of Armenians, Israel ought to have, should have withdrawn its arms to um, done an arms embargo on Azerbaijan. The Lord knows what's going to happen but i just feel for the armenians it's just it's a terrifying um it the whole thing about what's going on there is so grievous to me <clears throat> i have spoken about it previously please follow the news regarding the situation there they've got a puppet leader who's got no courage and he's just given over his people as lambs led to the slaughter, basically. Babylonian empires, <clears throat> according to according to the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation. I touched on this in my previous videos. The lion, the the lion, the bear, and the leopard are three beasts. That are forming a coalition. The Babylonian Empire was represented by the lion. Now these empires are coming back in the form of the beast. It's where their empires ruled and governed. All of them controlled Judah. Okay, So it's relative to Israel. The Babylonian Empire noticed the boundaries on these maps. Medo-Persian, probably one of the biggest out of all three of them. <clears throat> Medo-Persian. Huge. This is the bear. And then we have the Greek Empire. Massive. Again, controlled Judea. So this final beast is a combination conglomerate of those empires and when I talk about the northern alliance the southern alliance or the southern block and the northern block we're talking about Israel and the southern nations that are in alliance with it the Abraham Accords for example they want to work with Israel economic purposes security purposes primarily because of the threat from iran so they can prosper in fact i'm going to share with you a clip because you may not have had let me see if it's all right netanyahu gave a speech at the united nations many diplomats from other countries walked walked off in protest Anyway, it was an excellent speech, but the moment he began to hold up these two um, images, the moment I saw that, I was like, wow, this is prophetic. Because I see in these maps the northern beastly empire and the southern alliance that Israel's going to make with the Arabs in the south. Tell me if you see the same thing. I also saw on Twitter that uh, Joel Richardson had also shared that he had that view. So, <laughs> interesting. Right, I'm going to play it. Hopefully the volume's loud. Listen to this speech. You've got to listen to all of it, though. Ladies and gentlemen, as Israel defends itself against Iran in the Seven Front War, the line separating the blessing and the curse could not be more clear. This is the map 
I presented here last year. It's a map of a blessing. It shows Israel, Israel and its Arab partners forming a land bridge connecting Asia and Europe between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Across this bridge, we will lay rail lines, energy pipelines, fiber optic cables, and this will serve the betterment of two billion people. Now look at this second map. It's a map, look at the second map. It's a map of a curse. It's a map of an Ladies and gentlemen, as Israel defends itself against Iran in the Seven Front War, Did he just the line separating the blessing and the <clears throat> curse could not be more clear. Let me replay it. This is the map I presented here last year. Well, let's just look at that map. It's just because it's it's um, uploading the video. Look at that map for a second. <laughs> what do we see here? We've got Israel, and he's saying it's the blessing because if you if you're a part of our alliance with Arabs, we are working towards peace and prosperity. And I believe the Bible also talks about that. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Mm. So this alliance with Saudi Arabia is yet to happen. But Saudi Arabia, playing it very coy, was actually one of the countries at the UN when Netanyahu was giving this speech, was one of the countries that walked out in protest. <clears throat> they have to do that. They're saving face amongst the Arab and Muslim world. But secretly, they work together, Israel and Saudi Arabia. It's a secret, but not a secret, right? Basically. So let me just recap what he said. It's a map of a blessing. It shows Israel, Israel and its Arab partners forming a land bridge connecting Asia <coughs> and Europe between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Across this bridge, we will lay rail lines, energy pipelines, fiber optic cables, and this will serve the betterment of two billion people. Now look at this second map. Look at this other map, friends. It's a map. Look at the second map. Look it's at a that. map of a curse. The only thing that's missing is Turkey, right? Turkey's actually missing in that map and a bit more up here to the Turkic peoples, Russian. So imagine if those were all highlighted in black, how formidable of a force would that look to the little coalition that they've got going on here in the south? This is all prophetic. I'm telling you, it is. It's a map of an arc of terror that Iran has created and imposed from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean. Iran's malignant arc has shut down international waterways. It cuts off trade. <clears throat> it destroys millions, destroys nations from within and inflicts misery on millions. And this is what the advocates for Hamas, let's face it, that's what they are. Hamas advocates in the West, this is what they are advocating for. Madness, isn't it? Evil, that's what it is. On the one hand, on the one hand, a bright blessing. Now, when you look at the map on the right, the blessing, this alliance, no doubt, will infuriate those nations in the black, giving them more reason to invade Israel and Arabia. You see this? This is Ezekiel 38, you guys. Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 39, this clash between the north and the south. This is why Sheba and Dedan say, hey, have you come to take plunder? Because where they're located, if I can just bring my arrow, Sudan. Turkey has an island here across the Red Sea, strategically building up a military presence. And further south, also in Sudan, for this time. It's happening for this purpose, for this time. Crazy. I'll play a little bit more because it's really good what you said. A future of hope. On the other hand, a dark future of despair. And if you think this dark map is only a curse for Israel, 
if you think that, then you should think again. Because Iran's aggression, if it's not checked, will endanger every single country in the Middle East and many, many countries in the rest of the world. Because Iran seeks to impose its radicalism well beyond the Middle East. That's why it funds terror networks on five continents. That's why it builds ballistic missiles for nuclear warheads to threaten the entire world. For too long, the world has appeased Iran. It turns a blind eye to its internal repression. It turns a blind eye to its external aggression. Well, that appeasement must end. And that appeasement must end now. So think of the Iranian regime, Hezbollah ideology, right, being promoted in the West, American campuses, for starters. And then you got Qatari money, which has been poured into the EU and also American university campuses, education system. So think of it this way. We're seeing another, another um aspect of the Gog alliance with the Turkic peoples and the Iranians without them actually coming out in the open telling us they're working together you got the Muslim Brotherhood Turkey Qatar they also together are sending money influencing lobbying setting up their positions of influence in the USA in the UK in Europe building mosques charity organizations humanitarian outfits under the guise of simultaneously you've got muslim brotherhood and you've got the iranian regime indoctrinating the western young minds this my darling friends is how we got to where we are today so it's natural they're going to gravitate together eventually persia with turkic peoples and Sudan and Libya there's coming a point where eventually they're going to just throw their arms up and say what the heck let's just unite for the sake of destroying the Jews let's forget our differences for a day and let's destroy them even Arabia let's ethnically cleanse it let's liberate Mecca let's liberate all the Islamic holy sites at the same time let's just do it come on let's do it Little do they know that the God of Israel is the one orchestrating it so he can destroy his enemies. Foolishness, but there you go. I'll play a little more. <clears throat> the nations of the world should support the brave people of Iran who want to rid themselves of this evil regime. Responsible governments should not only support Israel in rolling back Iran's aggression, they should join Israel. They should join Israel in stopping Iran's nuclear weapons program. In this body, in the Security Council, we're going to have a deliberation in a few months. And I call on the Security Council to snap back UN Security Council sanctions against Iran because we must all do everything in our power to ensure that Iran never gets nuclear weapons. For decades, I've been warning the world against Iran's nuclear program. Our actions delayed this program by perhaps a decade, but we haven't stopped it. We've delayed it, but we haven't stopped it. Iran now seeks to weaponize its nuclear program for the sake of the peace and security of all your countries. For the sake of the peace and security of the entire world, we must not let that happen. And I assure you, Israel will do everything in its power to make sure it doesn't happen. <clears throat> so ladies and gentlemen, the question before us is simple. Which of these two maps that I showed you will shape our future? Will it be the blessings of peace and prosperity for Israel, our Arab partners, and the rest of the world? Or will it be the curse in which Iran and its proxies spread carnage and chaos everywhere? 
Israel has already made its choice. We've decided to advance the blessing. We're building a partnership for peace with our Arab neighbors while fighting the forces of terror that threaten that peace. For nearly a year, the brave men and women of the IDF have been systematically crushing Hamas's terror army that once ruled Gaza. On October 7th, the day of that invasion into Israel, that terror army numbered nearly 4,000, 40,000 terrorists. It was armed with more than 15,000 rockets. It had 350 miles of terror tunnels, an underground network bigger than the New York subway system, which they used to wreak havoc above and below ground. A year later, the IDF has killed or captured more than half of these terrorists, destroyed over 90% of their rocket arsenal, and eliminated the key segments of their terror tunnel network. In major military operations, You know what's funny to me? Well, it's not funny, it's really pathetic that the nations or the representatives here, the diplomats who walked out, they must be the goat nations, right? <laughs> there are sheep and goat nations, those who stood by Israel and those who rejected Israel. The Lord God says explicitly in the word of God, he's going to judge those nations on account of my people. Yeah. Major military operations, we destroyed nearly half of Hamas's, sorry, nearly all of Hamas's terror battalions, 23 out of 24 battalions. You know, this speech he gave was that, I think it was during the same few hours where he called for the assassination of uh, Nasrallah, during the same time. Now to complete our victory, we are focused on mopping up Hamas's remaining fighting capabilities. We are taking out senior terrorist commanders and destroying remaining terrorist infrastructure. But all the while, all the while, and I'll say this one more time, we remain focused on our sacred mission, bringing our hostages home. And we will not stop until that mission is complete. Now, ladies and gentlemen, even with Hamas's greatly diminished military capability, the terrorists still exercise some governing power in Gaza by stealing the food that we enable aid, ad age, sorry, that we enable aid agencies to bring into Gaza. <laughs> Hamas <laughs> steals the food and then they hike the prices. They feed their bellies and then they fill their coffers with money that they extort from their own people. They sell the stolen food at, exorb at exorbitant prices. And that's how they stay in power. Well, this too has to end, and we're working to bring it to an end. <clears throat> and the reason is simple. Because if Hamas stays in power, it will regroup, rearm, and attack Israel again and again and again, as it is vowed to do. So Hamas has got to go. I'm... I'm, I can't play the whole video, but please listen to it because he gives a really scathing rebuke to all the diplomats in that room, to the United Nations. He called it a swamp of something, something like that. Oh my goodness, it was really on point. Um, moving on swiftly. So, I mean, they have a vision for the region and Iran is just getting in the way. And then, of course, you've got Hamas, right, who did their um, terrorist attack, jihadist attack to liberate our goods. Hmm, all about Jerusalem, eh? Funny that. The Bible talks about Jerusalem being the center. And we are told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's all about the region, friends. All about Israel. The Bible prophecy scriptures that we read, all centered on it. Kushner has discussed U.S.-Saudi diplomacy with Saudi crown prince. I never say that, diplomacy, diplomacy. <laughs> In a September 18th speech... The prince said the kingdom would not recognize Israel without the creation of a Palestinian state, suggesting a deal may be near impossible for the foreseeable future. They're going to work around it. They'll work around it. They'll do something with the status quo regarding the Temple Mount. I'm sure they're going to work around it somehow. 
something that he can do while saving face and gaining respect in the Muslim Arab world and while Israel is just desperate for peace. Israel's probably going to make some kind of concession in order to get him to sign the Abraham Accords. We will wait to see. I have said, and I'm on record for saying it, I believe the temper mat is going to be a part of the major negotiation thing. It's going to be on the table regarding the temper mount. Saudi Arabia seeking control of it, taking away the, um, the control from Jordan, who's currently in charge of the temper mount the dome of the rock and all that i think that's going to change soon but that's not that important i don't you know i don't like hinge everything based upon that it could go either way but that's what i think might happen temper mount status quo nankov stability in a sea of regional radicalism look at this old historic painting Jews at the cotton market gate to the Temple Mount, painted by Gustav, 1880s. Wow. The status of the Temple Mount, Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, has become destabilizing issue in Israel, Middle East. It only became destabilizing, the irony, once the Jews got back into their homeland. When the Jews were in charge of their own land, their own city. Imagine, the world outraged. Crazy. Demonic and the Middle East. The demand for the liberation of Al-Aqsa has become the battle cry for extremists including Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Iran, Turkey. Al-Aqsa's occupation provided Hamas with a pretext to launch its terror campaigns against Israel. Because when you make it religious, and they keep telling us it's not religious, it's about Zionism. Well, it is religious, and we know it is, and you tell us it is by the words that you speak. This is how they get support from the Muslim world. They all gather together. Hamas branded is October the 7th Massinga, the Al-Aqsa flood, reminiscent of the PLO's Al-Aqsa Intifada. The term was then coined by PLO chairman. I mean, they're calling for global intifada, so I don't know why people just, just don't categorize it as an intifada, because it is. The term was then coined by PLO chairman Arafat to complete to compete with Hamas for popularity on the Palestinian street. Ridiculous. The strategy of invoking Al-Aqsa is in danger, which they keep talking about. It's so annoying. Any time a Jewish person goes anywhere near the compound, Al-Aqsa is in danger. These hypocrites. You're in control of the thing. They're not satisfied with it. They just don't want any Jews anywhere. Anywhere near it. At all. In their own land. The Jews have no control over their own holy temple man. What apartheid are people talking about? The moment Israel takes over Jerusalem and bans all Muslims from entering anything anywhere near the compound, maybe then we can talk about apartheid. Maybe religious apartheid, possibly. But it's ludicrous to accuse Israel of apartheid. When it's actually, again, projection. It's the Islamist nations, the Islamist Muslim fanatics who practice apartheid in their own countries where they are the majority. And they actually want to enforce those apartheid policies in the West where they came as visitors, as guests, as immigrants. Arab countries with diplomatic ties to Israel. That's what it looks like. <clears throat> Imagine Sudan being a part of the Gog Gog coalition. What a betrayal, huh? They betray one another and they're going to betray Israel again. Because Israel never learns until the Lord is going to restore them. Then their eyes will be opened. A global demonstrations in response to Israel Palestine conflict dotted around the world for the poor Palestinians who are not even a people group who have no ethnic history in the land who are just a mate it's all manufactured they're all Arabs Jordanians labeled Palestinians poor people been used as pawns it's so pathetic it's just disgusting oh and those Christians that live in those um, in those areas with their replacement theology are all wrong. They're all wrong. They don't understand the scriptures. 
They have no discernment of what the prophets wrote. They don't even read it. So I, I really struggle to really understand their per, their point of view because I'm like, you're ignorant. What can I do? You're ignorant. You have no discernment. There's no excuse for it. No excuse for it at all. Pro-Palestine protests. And I wonder, when I look at this, why these people were so ugly looking. It's because of the hatred. Hatred makes people really ugly looking. Just ugly, disgusting, gross. Palestinian babies are not collateral. Well, they are to Hamas. So if you've got issues with that, take it out with Hamas. Because all of you people are just collateral for Hamas. It's always been that way. But of course they're projecting because that's what they do. Why? Because it's effective. The gullible West, they suck it all up. They believe it. Another aspect that I've spoken about in many videos is the religious, spiritual end times effect. Um end times teachings of islam that also fan these flames yes it does it fans the flames of intifada <clears throat> because they want to restore the khilafah which includes destroying israel and making it jew free the end time scenario envisions a leader coming to unite the muslim world and then guess who follows shortly behind him? The Islamic version of Jesus, which is an apostate, the false prophet. So all these, take, it, take all this into consideration, and now you know what we're dealing with. <clears throat> they use this imagery all the time for accusing this imagery of being the Dajjal. <clears throat> Aluxa, Dome of the Rock rather, that's Aluxa there. <clears throat> the final battle, so they know this is the thing, the hypocrisy stinks. Muslims, when they're preaching, when they're doing their dava, they know what they really believe, but they just don't tell you and me openly. They talk amongst themselves about this end times scenario, but they don't talk about this when they are out in the public on the streets giving their dawah they, when they're evangelizing they don't say that but we already know I know it and they don't fool me one bit so when they tell these nominal Christians that don't you know that we love Jesus and we have a lot of respect for him and and the nominal brainwashed lukewarm Christian is so impressed with that oh really and they suck it all up but they're not telling us the full truth but we know it this is what they want. They know there's a final battle coming. That their two leaders, Isa and Mahdi, are going to fight Dajjal, who is actually their evil depiction of the glorious Jesus Christ. Anyway, what they don't know, and what, the, what Satan does know, is that eventually in the future... After the Lord Jesus has reigned as a Jewish king in Jerusalem after the thousand years reign, there's coming a new Jerusalem from heaven. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And did you know, and I know you do, because I read the verses, let's read this. This was a nice little paper written by gotquestions.org about the 12 gates and the 12 foundation stones that make up the city the new jerusalem do you know it's all entirely jewish yeah all those christians who are anti-israel anti-jew anti-zionist they say that we don't need jerusalem we have the new jerusalem but they don't realize that the new Jerusalem is also all Jewish. What, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to hide behind? 
The twelve gates in Revelation 21 belong to the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven to the new earth, shining with the glory of God. John describes the city. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 12. <laughs> What are these anti-Semite Christians going to do with that? The gates are miraculous in their construction. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The gates of the New Jerusalem will never be shut. It's just so interesting that you've got this replacement theology amongst Christians and you've got the actual replacement system which is islam both agreeing with one another crazy during the reign of david i won't read all of it it's too much <clears throat> during the reign of david out of all the territories of the tribe of tribes of israel god chose the city of jerusalem in judah as the place where god's name would rest revelation speaks of the new jerusalem that has been prepared for the reign of the lamb this new Jerusalem sits on 12 foundations representing the 12 apostles, or Jewish, who would reign over the 12 tribes of Israel. The gates of the city are symmetrically arranged, and we know the beauty of it, how it's described. Beautiful. Let me read this little excerpt here too, just in case I have some crazy person that gets all unhinged and leave, leaving a vitriol of words and comments under this video. The gates of the New Jerusalem are inscribed with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel was chosen by God to be a light to all nations. Yes, he did. Read Isaiah chapter 49 and Romans chapter 9. And God will never revoke Israel's status as his chosen people. See Romans 11. The New Jerusalem thus contains a tribute to the patriarchs of Israel. <laughs> It also contains a tribute to the apostles. So both Old Testament and New Testament are represented in the city. The New Jerusalem is filled with the elect of God from all errors. Romans 9 <clears throat> makes a distinction between physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and their spiritual descendants. Even Jesus did. He clarified it with the Pharisees at the time who were giving him a hard time. Because they were like, well, we are, our father is Abraham. And, and Jesus basically said, no, your father is the devil. You see? So we need to learn how to discern who is of Israel and who isn't. Just because you're born of that lineage does not guarantee you anything. None whatsoever. Only Jesus does. Those who exercise the same faith in God as the patriarchs did, just as not all Gentiles come to the light of the world, some Jews choose to live in darkness. Not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is not the children by physical descent who are children, God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. Reference Romans 9, Romans 2, Romans, uh, John chapter 8. <clears throat> those who have faith in Christ are accounted the spiritual seed of Abraham it will be true Israel those who have trusted in Jesus Christ that will enter the gates of the kingdom of heaven this applies to Jews Jews who believe in Messiah Jesus have obviously circumcised their heart in the new covenant. Jews in Messiah are the Israel of God. It is through the twelve gates of the new Jerusalem that the true tribal people, believers of Jewish descent, as well as Gentiles who have been grafted in with God's people, Romans 11, will enter the joy of the Lord. Marvellous. And what was that final picture that I had there? Oh, just to show you how massive it's going to be. And with that, my friends, I'll be back. I've got more to share. Pray for me as I pray for you. 
May the name of the Lord be glorified. May the King of Israel rule and reign in Jerusalem on the throne, his rightful place, and may the Lord make his enemies his footstool. In Jesus' name. Amen.